Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We're up in the plant room this morning because it was supposed to get down to 15 degrees last night and I'm not sure it actually dipped that low, but pretty close. So it's cold out. It feels a lot better in here. Um, also, another thing I did bug Aaron to be in this recap video because I'm always needing to ask him questions and there's always questions that are directed kind of at him, like about irrigation and things like that. Um, he did agree to mic up. Do you have your mic on? Better turn that on. Turn it on right now. That's our compromise. So at least you'll be able to hear him a little bit better. He's just not super comfortable in front of a camera and I get that. I wasn't either for a long time and I'm still not, <laughs> still not 100%. Do you ever get really comfortable in front of a camera? Do people? Some people seem to love it. I guess it might like fill some people up. It's, it's, a, it's a vulnerable thing, so I totally understand that. And then I do want to announce the winners of the flowerbulbs.com giveaway that we announced last week. Um, there are five winners, so we'll just do run through that real quick before we get into the questions. So the winner of the 100 Deep Sunset Tulips is Isabel. The winner of 100 Come As You Are Narcissus or Daffodil Blend is Bonnie. Uh, 250 crocus go to Nora, 50 hyacinths goes to Chris, and winner of 100 tulip triple double light mix goes to Eduardo. So congratulations to all five of you. Aaron has already messaged you, so uh, yeah. If you message us, message us back, then we can get all your info and get those bulbs sent your way. All right, so just jumping right into the videos from last week. The first one was our end of season cut flower garden tour, which the way the garden looked that day to what it looks like now is completely different. I'm telling you, like there are, there are not very many things left out there. We've been cleaning it out and it's just, it looks so bare and so sad. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you what the cut flower garden kind of did talk through some of the varieties um, and show you what it looked like late in the season because it really did last us quite a long time. To have cut flowers right up till the week of Halloween, I mean, that's pretty good. I think. There are like Lady Godiva orange calendulas are still rocking and the snapdragons are still looking good. Um, and then some of our root vegetables. Russell is meowing somewhere. Russell, <laughs> quit. I don't know what he wants. Just want some loves. Okay. Uh, Deborah said, where do you buy the flashback mix from? I got the flashback mix calendula from Johnny Seeds. I couldn't remember if I had ordered that one from Florette or Johnny's. It's usually one of the two. Uh, Ann C360 Degrees said, why is your cut flower garden always full? You're not selling cut flowers. We are not anticipating selling cut flowers at any point. Um, growing that cut flower garden is one for my love of growing things. I just like you have the space to grow stuff, grow it. I'd like to give away as much as possible. I didn't expect the garden to yield like it did. And we cut a ton, ton of flowers. And I just had like the last few weeks of kind of this season, I had people coming in all the time with buckets and just filling buckets full of flowers, taking them home. They just kept producing. <laughs> Next year, I will be much more organized, kind of like knowing what, you know, that space has a potential to do. And so I can be much more efficient with things that are coming out of the garden. But you know what? Even the stuff that wasn't picked, we enjoyed it fully. We could see it every time we drove by. Um, I would walk through there. Benjamin would play out there. And it was just a, it was a joy. Michael said, I grew coral fountain amaranth that I started from seed indoors and it did amazing inside. It also transplanted well when I moved it into the garden. Maybe try starting it indoors this coming spring. I think you're right, Michael. <laughs> I had such an issue starting it in the middle of summer when it was 98 degrees, just based on what those seeds need. They need light to germinate, um, which it's impossible when it's 98 degrees to keep them wet enough to germinate um, when they're just sitting on the top of the soil surface, unless I could be out there a lot. And I, I just didn't have the time to do that. But I did have one take and it was beautiful, but I think indoor start, seed starting might be the way to go next year on that one. Rob asked, what happened to your sweet peas? They did beautifully. I mean, I was really surprised. I started those seeds all inside. We took them out there before we even had water plumb to the area. I planted them along the front fence line. They didn't grow enormously tall, and I don't know why that was, but they bloomed beautifully enough to where I got lots of seeds. I harvested a ton of seeds, so I have all the seeds I need for next year. In fact, I might have ordered a couple of new varieties that I didn't have out there for this next season, but like I'm set going forward, which is really nice. Jenny said, did you notice the gomfrina smelling out there? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, so we've planted the truffle of pink gomfrina near the house. Uh, and I usually plant it in quite a, quite the quantity. And I think that could be the reason maybe why I smell it. But the other varieties, I had a variety called Audrey White and then one called Quis, 
QIS purple, and there was no odor from those, but those are like out in the wide open, tons of airflow, and there weren't like a ton of them. So I don't know. Uh, Key of C said, I love that you have test plots for trying crops and flowers. I noted that most of your new property is flat. Do you have any plans for creating mounds, contour, or hills to add a little interest to the terrain? You know, we've talked about that quite a lot actually recently because we're going through different options and different ideas of what we can do up there and possible water features and all that sort of thing. Um, and it's a possibility we may add a little bit of berming, a little bit of contour, but I am not a huge fan of creating something that doesn't look like the native landscape that surrounds you. Like, like the whole reason I was a little bit, when we put in the pondless waterfall, I just, I had to trust that I was gonna love it and I do because I just thought, you know, I don't want it to look like a pile of rocks that we gathered from not in this area and just dumped somewhere in our yard. Like I like it when, you know, rocks are incorporated into water features that look, clearly look like it came from that landscape. And same with like terrain. If you have a flat landscape, I kind of like to work with that rather than try to create something that's clearly not like it looks man-made, if that makes sense. I am, I'm horrible at explaining kind of my vision there. And I don't think a little bit is bad. Um, and in fact, it can create some mystery, but I really cautious about that sort of thing. Christy said, Laura, can you do another cooking video? Even if it's pickling the cucumbers, I'd love to see that. You know what, I just, I noticed this week because of a video later on, which I'll answer questions from, I did a little bit of cooking. I am always so nervous when I do that because like, I'm not <laughs> obviously a professional chef, my like my kitchen isn't spotless um all of those things the lighting isn't good in our kitchen and every time i do that i'm like oh i hope that this is okay i hope people are going to like this it's kind of gardening because i usually am incorporating something that i grew um we always have such a great response from you guys which i really appreciate thank you it makes me feel really good um, but you know as things get cooler i'm sure we'll probably incorporate more of that stuff in because i'm going to have more time to be doing things like that Christina said, you may have said before, but I was wondering how old Russell is. So we adopted Russell from the Idaho Humane Society when he was 11 weeks old. And that was when I was pregnant with Benjamin. Benjamin is almost three. So Russell's right around three years old. Uh, Megan said, of all the produce you grow, is there anything you run out of mid fall, winter, and you have to go buy at the grocery store? Or do you just make do with what you have because it's inferior? Make do with what you have because the grocery store stuff is inferior. You know, I'm not super picky about it. The only things I don't buy off season typically are tomatoes, unless I'm buying cherry tomatoes because those typically taste pretty good. Um, and corn and garlic. I find that corn, tomatoes and garlic are inferior at the grocery store compared to what you can grow. But like lettuce, eh, lettuce is lettuce, right? Spinach is spinach. Bell peppers are bell peppers. I don't see any huge difference, but I am not, I guess, a connoisseur. A lettuce connoisseur. A love lettuce connoisseur. <laughs> Portland Val 55 said, It's miraculous to me that you started much of your flower cut garden from seeds. They grew into huge, beautiful rows of flowers. With a new baby, will you be able to start so many seeds in 2021? I have no idea. <laughs> or will you wait until longer in the season and direct so? Um, you know, I'm I'm planning on starting a lot of things. A lot of stuff, like we're, we're going to have the baby in January. And really the only thing I started in January were my Lysianthus. So if all I have are just two or three trays of Lysianthus for the first one or two months that we have the baby, um, I think I can probably manage that. However, I thought when we had Benjamin that I'd just be able to like strap him on and continue working the way I always had. And I was so like, that was wrong. so wrong. I mean, it just flipped our lives upside down um, because we were just, well, we waited what, 12 years to have a baby. And we were, I don't know, you just kind of get set in what life is like. and. I just thought we would have like this little bump and that we'd get right over it. it took us like a year to regain our footing, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. I, I look back at that first year with Benjamin and we look at like projects we got done. I'm like, how? How did we get that done? I feel like I was like kind of gasping for air a little bit. And so I know like I know the reality of the situation. However, I do, I don't know, I'm entering this, having this baby with so much less fear, so much more like... I'm so much more relaxed about it because I know a little bit more now. I knew nothing before. I'd never changed a diaper before. I'd never really held a newborn before because I'm not a huge kid person. And so like I never babysat, I never did any of that. So it was a huge learning curve for me. And so now I feel a little bit more comfortable, but you know, you never know what to expect. And 
I am learning as I grow older and older just to keep an open mind about stuff. And it is what it is. Like everything is a season. And if I don't start as much stuff next year, it's because I'm spending more time with my babies and that's better anyway. Next video was an unimpre unimpressive sweet potato harvest. So it was like my, my fail of this year. There's always one or two things where you're like, well, that, that didn't work. And I kind of anticipated it a little bit when I planted them out in July, some of the slips were black. Like I thought these aren't gonna produce roots. I mean, I got what, 10 pounds or something, maybe a little over 10 pounds of sweet potatoes. Better than nothing, they filled up the space, suppressed weeds, they looked pretty for the summer. Um, and you know, I've had way more successful harvests in the past. So hopefully going forward, it's better. But anyway, um, Marisol said, question, how do you harvest the lettuce? Do you pull out the dirt or cut? Um, I cut mine. Usually I seed mine really thick. And so I can just cut it. It's like cut and come again. And they usually kind of re-sprout and grow back. Uh, Ruth said, what different recipes do you make with your lettuce? Do you make garden salads? Yeah, sometimes. I made a really good one the other night. Wasn't that a good one, Erin? It had lots of spinach. We're, we heavy, we eat heavy on the spinach. We're like a little bit of lettuce, and then I put feta cheese, and those candied pecans and cranberries, oh, yeah, and really cherry good. tomatoes, yeah. and green onions from the garden. It was really yummy. Um, but you know, we make uh, salads every once in a while, and then the only other way I usually use lettuce is in like sandwiches and burgers. Uh, Benji said two questions. One, where do you get your dump wagon? That's a gorilla cart, uh, and it's got we've got like maybe two or three that have that uh, dump feature. So there's like a little yellow uh, lever. Um, and so you can, you know, pull it and then dump whatever's in there out. And there's like, yeah, three different, three or four different models of Gorilla Carts. There may be more, all different sizes that have that feature and it is really handy. And number two, totally off the subject, but are you leaving your Aquascape water feature on during the winter months? Probably not. Um, we got really cold, you know, last night. And I just winterized my fountains yesterday. I will probably pull that pump here pretty quick. It's in a pretty deep reservoir. So I anticipate like I could probably run it for quite a long time because the frost isn't going to go down like super like far for a while. So I could probably run it for a few more weeks, but I want to save that pump. It's a big pump and not like super cheap to replace. So I want to take care of it. Mackenzie said, unrelated to this video, but what happened with Flower Alley and the raised beds behind the cold frame? So the raised beds grew beautifully this year. Tons of strawberries, flowers were beautiful, um, hops grew like crazy. The espalier still looks amazing. They really haven't changed though since the last time I showed them, so I haven't showed them the raised beds in a while. Uh, the Flower Alley containers, we actually pulled those. Do you remember when that was? seems like a long time ago now. We pulled yeah. them because we were just sick of it almost. Yeah. They, the, whole, the whole goal of that series was to use smaller containers. They were 14 inch diameter and fewer plants just to show what these plants can do and how you don't need very many plants to create something amazing, which I, it definitely proved that. But when you're using plants like Colorblaze Golden Dreams Coleus and Truffula Pink Gumfrina, some incredible sunflowers, those plants get so big and they're so vigorous that you really only need one plant per container, honestly. Um, unless you're the type of person who likes to go out and kind of fiddle with your containers and prune on things. I mean, you could keep things a little bit more contained. I did not. I went out there probably twice in the season and really gave them a good haircut. In fact, I think we filmed a video about one of them where I really kind of took things down and then they flushed back out so fast. Anyway, we had some really bad windstorms that came through like late summer, early fall, and they snapped a bunch of the coleus off and uh, one of the big branches of the sunflower. And so we just got to a point where I'm like, this is out of control. Um, so we ended up taking them and cleaning them out a little bit early. Uh, Danette said, can the plant protection cover be used to start seeds outside in beds? Absolutely. I would probably recommend getting the right size though for your raised bed. Like in that um, case I had a four by eight, which just fit right over the top of my three by six, which will extend the life of my lettuce, which makes me very happy. Um, but it's not like exactly air, airtight. If I had a three by six that I could kind of like attach to the bed where there wasn't air kind of getting up underneath, I think that would be ideal. However, I do have to say we had horrible winds this last weekend and that thing stayed put, all of them. All of my protection things that I have out stayed exactly where I put them and I didn't tack anything down. So I'm really encouraged by that. Uh, Venus said sweet potato greens are edible too, although they are bitter. I went back to check in your older videos. Are the raised beds bottomless? Yes. Are they resting on gravel? No, they are resting on native soil. So 
what we did is we had the whole area landscape fabric laid out um, because we deal with bindweed and uh, puncture vines so badly in this area. That's the only way I can really keep them down without spraying. So we put landscape fabric down, then we had our beds built and set on top of the landscape fabric, and then we cut out the landscape fabric from inside the beds. Um, and then that fabric, we kind of like folded up to the insides of the beds and tacked it so that, I don't know, it protects the wood a little bit more, but my stuff can grow straight down into native soil if it's my planting something that's deep rooted. It's really too bad that we didn't film any of the, the second raised beds that went in, like the, the ones that are there now. Yeah. Well, it was so, remember, it was like time crunch to the max. Yeah. Because we needed them in so that the sprinkler, the faucets could be right. fixed. Right, right. Oh, that was such a stressful time. It was a stressful time. Uh, Diane said, are those little tents like mini high tunnels? How much warmer will it be inside there? This might be um, my garden answer for my 100 by 60 foot backyard. Please add a link for these. So our, we usually put links in the description of the video. Um, so that's where you can find links to the stuff I've used most of the time. And they are like mini high tunnels. Um, they are quite a bit warmer on the inside. I don't know how many degrees. Um, for an area that's large though, you might consider something like, I just got some super hoops. So they're um, these like wire metal, like metal hoops that you can make. I think you could, they're custom the size. And then you can put harvest guard material or plastic or whatever you want. And then you can do like a huge row of them instead of being kind of limited by like a four by eight size or a three by six size, which you could totally do that. And it's nice because they're very easy to move and, and things like that. But the super hoops are a little bit easier to manage a larger, larger area, I think. Uh, Monica said, well, the strawberries you planted in the galvanized containers earlier this summer need to be covered to make it through winter. Do you plant them in the ground or what? Not sure how to overwinter mine in zone five. So what I do with mine, like the galvanized container is actually in our greenhouse right now. It's not a heated greenhouse, it's a cold frame. Um, so it just takes the edge off the cold and that's where I winter over most of my containerized stuff that, are, that aren't rated super low, um, like zone wise, because they just do better that way. And then I'll cut them back a little bit. Usually I haven't cut them back yet. They still have some nice leaves on them. I'll cut them back and clean them up before I bring them out in the spring and that's how I typically winter mine. However, I do have strawberries in my raised beds that come back every year and they are awesome. Second year, I do have to say, I posted a picture yesterday on Instagram of, of strawberry, a strawberry plant I have in our greenhouse that's like bearing fruit and blooming, it's beautiful. And there were a lot of you guys who tried that variety this year and it was like kind of mixed results on taste and size of berry and, and yield. I have noticed that second year is, is the year because last year I had, I had fairly good productivity, um, but it was nothing like this year. This year it was just like overnight I would have a new crop of huge berries and it was all season long and there's still like, I didn't have time yesterday to go out and pick what I saw was out there and I don't know what state they're in now after a 15 degree night, I'm guessing they're probably not good, but uh, I just was amazed by what they did this year. And I planted the buried treasure red primarily but I've also got some buried treasure pink and buried treasure white as well. Benjamin ate a lot of strawberries this year. Yeah, I think he actually burned himself out yeah. because by the end of the season, I would ask him like if he wanted some, he was like, no, he yeah. wants grapes. You know, he wanted grapes toward the end because it was something new. Yeah. We do have a grapevine singular in the back formal garden. It's like growing on a trellis. It was there when we moved in and I think it might be the variety Vanessa. It's like a red seedless grape. They're really tasty, but Benjamin will get the whole cluster and he just carries it around the yard and eats them. It's pretty cute. That's what I used to do when I was little. Still do now. <laughs> Adi said, uh, you mentioned soil heat cables in this video. Can you elaborate on that at some point, please? Yes, I actually picked up four brand new soil heat cables last week and I hopefully, I plan on using them this week. We'll see what happens, but I will go over all of that in that video. And Emily said, I noticed that there's no construction noise. Is the house next door complete? It is pretty darn close. In fact, we went over there the other day and they showed us the whole house. It was really fun to go in and see. They had their fence built this last week. So like behind our vegetable garden where you could see like right into their yard and into their windows, it's semi blocked off now, which is really nice. So, you know, um, the other neighbors put up their, their fence and then this neighbor continued on with the same exact fencing. So it's very nice one continuous look and it kind of backs our arborvitas, which makes our arborvitas just really shine. Um, anyway, yeah, I think they're pretty much done. They had some sod put in last week and I think they're moving in. Erin, I saw lights in there last night. Oh, wow. So I think they're 
in the process of moving in right now. And you guys, they have two little boys. One of them, I think six months older than Benjamin. And the other one might be a couple years older than Benjamin, but they have a ball playing together, like just running around and like screaming and <laughs> just having a great time, which is so nice. I'm so glad that Benjamin will have kids. Well, there's, there's a lot of kids in that neighborhood actually. Um, so there'll be a lot of, I think, neighborhood fun when the kids are growing up. The next video was a little planting, a little harvesting, and a little cooking. It was a totally unplanned video, but I, we, it was a Saturday and I was just gonna go out and putter in the garden and I just thought, oh, you guys might like to see those plants were so pretty. Every time I do a project, I'm always a little torn, like should I just do this project and just do it and get it done? Or should I show everybody these really pretty plants because I think <laughs> they would enjoy it anyway. So it ended up being kind of a mishmash of everything I was doing that afternoon. Um, Jessica said, did I hear you say you are building a new root cellar? Have you talked about that previously? Yes, we've showed it in a couple of vlogs, I think primarily. In the middle bay of our garage, we had this little cubby where we were storing just random stuff. And we thought, well, we could just have that little cubby framed in and insulated and just a little AC unit put on the back, AC slash heat unit. And we could use that to store our produce because now that we're producing so much more, our basement works okay if you have a little bit of stuff. But if you have a large harvest, you really want to try to save as best as possible and so you can utilize it through the winter and spring months, you really need a proper area with the temp right temperature. So it's not quite done yet. We're still waiting on the electrician, but I will give like a final reveal of that um, when it's all done because I have so much stuff already to put in there. It's just waiting. It's waiting for it to be finished. Gardens need time said, couldn't those things you were planting freeze like next week? Um, all of the stuff I planted minus the mums can handle a lot of cold. Actually, the mums can handle a lot of cold too, but I think the mums will be the first ones to kind of like fizzle out a little bit. Oftentimes, the um, a lesson will last all the way through Thanksgiving for us. The cabbage and pansies oftentimes, unless we have a really hard winter, they'll oftentimes make it to spring. East Tim said, when you move the center barn door over to the left, what will you do to match the concrete apron to the new door opening? Um, so I think we're taking all the concrete aprons out and we're re-pouring all three of them so that they all match and they're all uniform. Elizabeth said, in the part where you're talking about your containers that you surprisingly love, what are those peachy mums with the yellow center? And I can't remember the name of that. Hold on, I can get the name. Flamingo Pineapple Pink Mum. That's from Proven Winners. Those are available online. I think still. Uh, Tracy said, yum, I'm coming to your house for dinner. Real question, do you cut back your lamb's ear? Mine looks terrible around this time. I do leave the bloom stalks on. Does that stress them out more? I wish uh, I could find a variety you have because it always looks gorgeous. So the variety I have is Helen Von Stein. I don't leave bloom stalks on because I don't care for the appearance of those. Of course, when you cut up blooms off of anything, it's sending less energy to the blooms and seed production and such and more energy into leaf growth. Um, so I guess it might reduce the stress a little bit. I typically leave mine up um, until they start looking really bad, which is pretty late in the winter. And usually it's like kind of a spring, early spring chore. When I'm going back through the beds, I'll kind of clean them up, cut them back, and then they flush back quickly. Uh, Carol said, I have to try those recipes. How do you put in fall plants without hurting the perennials beneath the surface? I dodged the perennials. So that's the only reason why I kept everything so far forward in that bed. And I didn't tuck anything in the back because I wasn't sure. <laughs> I couldn't remember exactly where the peren perennials were. And I do have some bulbs back in there too that I didn't want to disturb. So in the front, I could clearly see where all the perennials still were so I could plant in between, which really doesn't disturb much. Elizabeth said, you said you may add boxwoods to the area you walk by every day. Do you plant a variety of boxwoods that don't stink? I have only one and I would love to add more to my landscape because I love the look, but it smells so bad. What do you recommend? So you just want to avoid English boxwoods. Those are the ones that smell when they bloom, kind of like cat, um, which is not super pleasant, especially in an area where you're walking by. The ones I usually plant are Winter Gem and Sprinter, which are Abuxus microphylla, uh, macrophylla, microphylla. <laughs> One of the two. Anyway, they don't smell at all. Um, so you just wanna make sure to avoid the English boxwood. Next video was 750 daffodils planted today. We planted those in the 14 containers along the east side fence line. I'm so excited. We planted the Ice Follies variety, which are like large blooms that are kind of silvery white with a yellow uh, cup in the center. So I think it's gonna be like the brightest, most cheerful looking display. James said, what do you do with the soil from the pots when you change it out? So oftentimes, um, if we have soil that hasn't been affected by any kind of insect or whatever, we will spread it out somewhere in the garden. Like right now it's nice because like the pasture area up front that we're going to be developing 
it has pretty much nothing in it right now and so we just like dump a lot of stuff up there and spread it out and it can incorporate in. If you've dealt with an incredibly hard insect problem or disease problem, I would just discard the soil completely. In those containers though, because we didn't really deal with much in those in terms of insects, we had a little bit of aphid issues, but those, if you take the top, you know, a good layer of soil off the top, you're removing most everything like eggs and stuff like that, that may still be in the soil. We did leave the bottom half of the soil in there when we planted the bulbs from our previous planting because we don't plan on doing a full clean out until spring. Um, so anyway, that's what we do. Uh, Lisa said, can't wait to see the daffodils next spring. So if you'll be using the drip system all winter, are you not worried about the quarter inch tubing freezing? Do you not blow uh, all your lines every fall? So I did mention, because we, we restrung the drip tubing back into those containers and we talked about running it because at that point in time, last week, it wasn't freezing yet. And we could have run it just to water everything in, um, but we have since blown out the lines and we can't run it now, but it's all set to go for spring. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're just doing hose water at this point um, from our frost-free <laughs> hydrants. Our regular hoses are all blown out. Adana said, in the aerial views, I noticed the triangular spot with the three-tiered fountain. I don't remember you going through there lately to talk about the plantings in there. Did I miss some videos? No, I don't think we've been through that area, have we? Like the gara came up, bloomed beautifully. The sweet autumn, autumn clematis bloomed be beautifully. We need to actually cut that down. Um, I don't leave that up long enough for the seed heads to fly and I don't think they've flown yet. That probably needs to happen this week. Ava said, what are those beautiful arrowhead yellow feather-like grasses blooming when you were walking back to the bulbs? Those are a type of nephophia or red hot poker called flashpoint. I planted those last year and they are just wonderful. They're probably one of my favorite red hot pokers that I have seen to date because I like the color so much better. They're kind of that like yellow that kind of fades to creamy yellow and then like a creamy white, so pretty. Mary said, wondering how you would handle giving the green leaves time to yellow in a pot after flowers bloom. If you were like me and leaving bulbs and pots to overplant with annuals. Took forever due to 2020 weather last year and ended up with a shorter season for my summer annuals, which then delayed my fall displays. Most of the time I find when people are planting bulbs and containers, they treat them as annuals, which I do with some of our bulbs, ones that I know don't come back very well for us every year. Um, in, the in the case of these daffodils, daffodils naturalize very well. They come back really consistently. So I do plan on planting those out in our landscape in the spring when they're done blooming. And you know, sometimes the leaves haven't fully yellowed. They full haven't fully died back, but I still will pop them out and put them in the landscape. And I find that most of the time I'll plant them with a little bit more bulb tone. Most of the time they come back just fine. I mean, ideal, you would leave them until all the leaves are yellow and like withered and you know dead on top of the soil before you do anything with them. That's ideal, but that doesn't always happen and it doesn't mean that they're not gonna come back for you, depending on the bulb. Sometimes it's trial and error and some years are just easier than others. Uh, Maureen said, I planted bulbs for the first time this weekend. I didn't have bulb tone, so I used biotone. Will it still work the same way? Yes, it will. I always say like, if you don't have whatever like tone is proper for whatever plant you have, just use biotone. <laughs> we use biotone on everything and it works great. And really what you're doing with bulb tone is you're trying to, it's got biotone in it. Um, it's, it's, you're trying to establish a really strong root system because that's what, we don't want to encourage growth right now, of course, during the winter time. We want them to just focus on creating a really strong root system so that the next spring, they're ready to take off. And that's what Biotone Starter Fertilizer does as well. Chelsea said, do you ever have issues with squirrels digging up bulbs? First time ever in those containers. We drove by the next day after we planted those and there it looked like a bunch of digging had gone on and there were bulbs sitting on top of the soil surface and sitting on the ground, not a ton of them, but like maybe five pots had been disturbed. I honestly don't know if it was squirrels because I've only, we have like one squirrel in our yard right now they didn't eat the bulbs, thankfully, because they're daffodils and they're pretty, I, I think most wildlife don't want to eat daffodils. But we also have a fox that's been running through our property every single night. We see it every night. Um, and I don't know if it could smell maybe the bulb tone in there and was trying to get after the bulb tone or if it was squirrels actually digging up the bulbs. I don't know which one it was, but I replanted the bulbs, everything's fine, and then put repels all on top. It's a bonide repellent for squirrels and deer and all kinds of stuff like that. It's just a granulated 
uh, substance you can put on the soil surface. You don't smell it, but animals don't like it. Christina said, I ordered some of the daffodils from Color Blends and ended up being short a few, so the ones that had two bulbs connected to each other, I broke apart and planted separately. Is this okay? Yes. Will they still bloom? Most likely. Uh, Shuen said, the spacing seems close for daffodils. Will they be used as annuals? Um, spacing in containers, you can plant them really close together, so you get a really high impact show. And then you can either treat them as annuals or you can pop them out and put them in the landscape. And when you put them in the landscape, make sure to give them their, I think it's like a spacing of three to six inches. You will wanna make sure when they're planted in their permanent location that they are spaced properly. And Judy said, I planted my bulbs before I saw your video. Then I put a small amount of bulb tone on top of the soil, but really a small amount compared to, compared to what you use. Should I add more on top of the soil? You could, you could sprinkle more on top and kind of work it into the top layers of soil. And then when you water and like winter moisture and stuff, uh, comes, it will push that fertilizer down to where it needs to be. I wouldn't stress about it too much. Next video was soil testing, not as simple as I hoped. And it was a little bit of a bummer of a video to film, to be honest. I was really hoping to have like some really solid answers and to show you these tests that were very, um, like, I don't know, that just made sense and nothing really made sense. And it still really doesn't because we sent the same sample from our new property to two different companies and got two completely different sets of results. So like, which one do you choose? Which one do you trust? And I know enough about our area um, to know kind of what to assume is going on in that soil. But if you're a person who just like, you don't really know about it and you really wanna learn about it and that if that happened or if you just sent it to one company and it came back and it was, it was the wrong results and so you were adding stuff that you didn't need to or not adding the correct stuff and not really seeing results, that would be super frustrating. So I kind of tried to just like lay it all out there, show you guys what we got back in terms of results, um, what I think, uh, like trying to simplify the whole thing too, like just working on the soil just in general, you know, adding organic matter, um, adding in compost, figuring out like the proper fertilizers for what you have, what you have um, planted and those sorts of things. I, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that whole process? I just feel like, I, I really wanted to, I, I do feel like we could have sent one more sample to our extension office. Yeah. Or through our extension office. Yeah, and we still can. I think yeah. we should do a follow-up where we, at some point. I think if you go with a testing agency that's more local, who knows kind of the ins and outs of your area, it might be more helpful because like in our case, there might be a ton of iron in the soil, but our high pH binds it up to where you can't utilize it. But when you get a test back from somewhere else and you see high iron levels, um, you think, sweet, I don't need to add any iron, but you don't realize that that soil pH is, is a huge factor in whether or not your plants can even use it. But people in your local area will know those nuances and will be able to tell you, yeah, you might have iron in your soil, but it's not available to your plants. To Soil Kit's credit though, they did email us and say that we needed to add yeah. soil acidifier. So I, don't, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but at the same time, Soil Kit did you know, yeah, soil kit was... But I don't know if they do that with everyone. We got Right, a, but their graph was the one that was all the same. Like it had high yeah. levels of everything and the other one was like all over the board. Well, really, we just need to do a third test um, and maybe we'll buy two more kits. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll get one for my soil testing and soilkit.com. Mm -hmm. And if you see that two are similar and one is off, probably throw out the one that's off. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. It wouldn't be hard to do. No. We, we should, should do order that. those today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll, maybe we'll have a follow-up video where things will make a little bit more sense. But uh, Donnelline said, hmm, why bother to test your soil with these results? How disappointing. I think like you, I will stick to what my plants tell me what the locals know. And that's kind of like in the end <laughs> how I felt too. Like I don't really know what the point is of this because I don't know if what results are actually true. Um, and it is the best, I mean the best thing you can do ever is to talk to people who actually garden in your area and get their recommendations because they've done it, they're in it, um, and they will have more knowledge that's applicable to your local area. Lori said, new property just doesn't have a ring to it. Are you going to give it a name? If you buy any more property, you will have to name it newer property. How about having a naming contest? Well, I figure we could do, if we are naming it like this, new property, newer property, newest yeah. <laughs> property. We could buy two more pieces. I think we need to wait until we develop it more because all of our other things are named after what they turned into. So I think like once the grass is put in, we'll call it the front lawn. 
And mm. once the cut flower garden is in the corner, we'll call that part the cut flower garden. So it won't garden. be like the new property no. as a whole. It's like, no, this we'll is just the cut section. garden area. Yeah. We'll call like the east side strip or whatever uh, where a, the grass is. That's a romantic name. I'm going to uh, go work on the east side strip real quick. <laughs> well, if you're mowing the east side strip you would know what that is based on the fact that it's the only piece of grass that's on the east side of our mm -hmm. property. So, I don't know. Well, we do refer to, like, this formal the area with the urns as the west side. Yeah. 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 There you go. I don't know. Uh, Willie said, did the My Soil results provide you a treatment plan? Um, and of these two kits, which would you recommend? My Soil did not, uh, MySoilTesting.com did not provide, like, a, a game plan I don't know of. Did, did they have, like, something in an email or... Uh, yeah, like, they, they had uh, products that you could, there was a link you could click okay. to buy products. So each they one were. of them did. So the, the soilkit.com had a sheet that came out with the test. Myosoiltesting.com had a link that you could click on that would take you to products like as a soil treatment plan option. Uh, Jazori said, totally random question. Would you ever consider picking five or six people and traveling to their hometown and helping them design their front or back garden using their specific zones? <laughs> if so, pick me. <laughs> um, we have talked about that as an option, actually. We're going to be doing something very similarly, but in our hometown here um, and the surrounding area, just because, you guys, I am not a huge travel person. I love to be home. I don't like to be away from Benjamin. I don't like to be away from home and my garden. Um, and you know, we might at some point like do one, wouldn't that be fun? Just like do a big old contest and pick one garden that we go to. So it's not like I have to be gone a lot. When we do what we do, the only time of year that we can really get away and not feel like something's going to fall apart is in the late fall and winter months, which is not really gardening season. Well, it is for some people. We could go somewhere warm, but the problem with going somewhere warm, like a warm climate in the winter is I don't have as much knowledge, like in a zone 10 or whatever, that might be nice in January. Um, I just don't have the plant knowledge for that sort of area. I mean, I could do some studying up and I could maybe design something, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's a fun thing to think about for sure. Uh, M.A. Walker said, how are you actually going to use this information? I really appreciate your explanation. So much easier to understand than the textbook style. I found online, but still wondering how to actually tackle the deficiencies. Do amendments come in single elements? Do you look for fertilizers that have higher, lower numbers to reach the goal levels? How many applications to get there? Do you retest to see if it's working? And if so, how, after how long? Um, I think I'm gonna use the extension office kit in hopes they'll be able to guide me. I think that's a really good idea. Um, and you know, I think do, amendments do come in single elements. So like if you need to lower your pH, you can do Soil acidifier, which is a sulfur. Actually, that's a sulfur gypsum. That's a two element kind of prong, two prong approach. But you can get just uh, sulfur, uh, elemental sulfur. You could add into your ground to bring pH down if that's a problem. If you are, um, if you have really acidic soil and you need to add lime, you can get that um, single element. I mean, you can get all kinds of mag manganese, magnesium sulfate. I mean, all kinds of different things you can add in singularly if that's what you're lacking. Um, and then there are a lot of things like um, um, compost. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to look for that word. Compost that have a lot of those things in it, just that organic matter and compost that you can add into the soil that really help condition. And they'll add more of like a broad uh, amount of stuff. And it's never a once and done. That's the bummer of the whole thing. Like you can work on it to where you get it really nice. It'll last for a little bit. I mean, you know, but like us, our water is even high pH. And so we're constantly like, flooding our stuff with high pH. And so it's something that we just have to consistently work on. Angie said, does the pH of soil naturally change over time? Once you amend the soil to achieve desired pH, how long will it stay that way? And we just kind of address that. It will only change over time if you are actually adding things in to help it change. Um, because I feel like your native pH, soil pH is kind of your native soil pH. I mean, maybe over the course of a long time, if you have some kind of huge environmental shift or something like that, um, don't you think like the pH in that case could maybe change a little bit, but yeah. I think in general it stays fairly the same and then you have to keep on working at it because if we do soil acidifier for let's say like a few years and get our pH just fantastic and then we get lax about it, I think 
uh, slowly that pH would start creeping back up. All right, so the last video from this week is barn plans and gardener supply unboxing. So in that video, I gave you a tour of the bay in our garage that we just had the new door, door hole cut in. We don't have the door yet. Um, and we are going to be changing that into the studio. Uh, which all of this stuff that's around me, all of our light systems, all of our plant seed starting, all of our gardening supplies will be in one location, which I'm so looking forward to. Also, I'm excited to reclaim this bedroom. It is a carpeted room. It's when you're filming, it's fairly, it's perfect for all my, my plants, but when you're filming, you've got lights, like there's a couple of lights in here and camera equipment, which tripods are big um, and it gets really cramped in here and really hot. <laughs> when you're filming. So I'm looking forward to just having like a little bit more space for that. Keep all the dirt out there, all of my supplies in one spot so I can find everything. Um, and it will be a heated and air conditioned like little unit within the barn where we can film on really hot or really cold days, which, you know, once we have two kids in the house, it'll be even harder to, <laughs> to film where, you know, things are quiet. Uh, and our house is definitely not bright. It's, you know, no house is really built for filming purposes. This is the brightest room with the two walls full of windows. And that's why we chose to put the plants in here. But it's just, whenever we film something inside, it always looks a little bit crummy. So I'm excited to have that space. And then we did get a few boxes from Gardener Supply that had new light systems and some hanging birdcage planters that we unboxed. So Eddie said, love the new barn so fresh and clean. Will you be losing storage space by converting it into a garden room? and where will the old stuff go? So Aaron and I went through the barn and what, how much do you think we got rid of? Um, Percentage. I think it was probably around like 10%. You think more than that? No, because we- We reorganized the, which Yeah, helped. the other bays are just so chock full now. Well, they won't be though, when all everybody's supplies are gone. Uh, there's so many building supplies in our barn right now. And like, yeah, I suppose. Um, the, what are those called? The- A-frames or? Yeah. Uh, Ponies? Ponies. Yeah. Is that what they're called? I think so. Or something pony? <laughs> Hold on, let me look at that because now I feel like it's I'm a... going to get made fun of <laughs> for calling them a pony. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, you put the wood on top of them. A pony wall. Nope. Uh... Sawhorse. Sawhorse. Well, you're close. You know what? I was on the right track. <laughs> you were, a couple ponies out there. Um, so we've got, yeah, we've got some sawhorses out there that have like a ton of like four by eight sheets of plywood and there's just like insulation rolls and just junk everywhere. Um, so once everybody's done with their projects, I think we'll have a lot of space, but we uh, reorganized um, so that things fit properly, the things we wanted to keep. And then we, we actually had maybe... We put a huge amount of stuff outside the barn, like probably two or three times. And we would put it out to friends and family, like come get whatever you want. Like we don't wanna have, we don't wanna sell it. We just wanna get rid of it. Like come today <laughs> and pick it up if you want it. So there were pots. We gave away a ton of pots, yeah. ton of tools, ton of like scrap lumber that we just didn't need or like pieces of molding, like long pieces of molding and stuff that totally usable. But you know, why do we keep all this stuff? all the time. I like to keep a little bit of stuff because when you are the type of person who likes to work on projects, it's nice to have a little bit of this and that, which Aaron and I struggle a little bit. Like Aaron's like, just go buy it new. Well, if I need like, you know, a little piece of four by four post, it's, not, it it's cost, real nice it to not have to go down to Home Depot yeah. to pick up another four by four post. Anyway, um, so we did a lot of compromising and organizing and I don't think we are going to suffer too much from a storage space. Um, also looking at the barn from the outside, what were the windows above the middle stall like? The hayloft windows. They're just regular windows. I don't know. They let, it, they let in a lot of light up there. A uh, cat said, I can't find the old video. Which seed starting tray did you like that self watered from the bottom? This is it right here. I cannot say enough good things about this tray. These come from Gardener Supply. They are a 24 cell tray. And let me show you how they operate. I've showed this to you in videos before, but I happen to have all my stacks of clean ones right here. So I grabbed one prior to the video. So it has a base here. This is a water reservoir base. And then there's this little platform, plastic platform here. That's what your seed starting tray will sit on. But first you put this water wicking mat on the platform. One side folds over and hits the water down in the reservoir. And then it soaks up the mat. It's like a capillary mat and then it sends it across the bottom so that this, which is sitting on that mat, 
can soak up water as it needs, as it needs it. Um, and so then you plant your seeds in here. You've got your little dome here. It's a very like tidy. They fit in these, uh, lights, all the light systems we have in here, they fit perfectly. Like they just slide in like that. And I can fit, I think five on one row. Um, the thing I love about them, I don't often fill up the reservoir right in the very beginning because the seeds are at the very top of the soil. I wait until they've germinated. They put on a little bit of a root system and then they can actually utilize the water. So I, I uh, top water most everything unless the seed packet specifically tells me not to, which some tell you don't water from the top. Um, in which case, like having these reservoirs, once they're up and going, I mean, it saves me so much work because they're constantly at the right state of moisture. And I could, I could leave for probably a couple days and have this room full of seedlings and they would not suffer at all um, because this reservoir holds enough water. So they have, I've put them through the test for a couple of years now and I've had really good success with them. I really like them. Um, the only thing is if you are wanting to start like a lot of one thing, I do have a few trays, like the 11 by 22 trays um, that have 72 cells little tiny cells and I will start some things in those if I want a huge quantity of those but these are nice because you don't feel the need to transplant most anything they can just go straight from this tray to be planted outside we'll link it down below a uh, Kendall said so when you move all your seed starts and lighting out to the barn will your plant room become the baby's room no this will actually be like a guest bedroom I think in the end we don't really uh, have much of, I don't know, I haven't done much inside. I have to be completely honest. We've done so much outside since we moved in four years, four and a half years ago. Um, and now that we haven't focused much on the inside, you know, little projects here and there, but like, I still don't have curtains up on most of our windows. I still haven't painted most of the rooms in our house. I haven't painted from the previous owners. Like this blue color was here when we moved in, which is totally fine in here. I'll probably paint it a different color once everything's gone out of this room. Um, but I'm kind of ready. I don't know if it's because I'm like kind of launching myself into nesting mode at this point, um, but I'm ready to make a few changes and get some rooms like done to where if somebody came and stayed with us, it's not like here, here's an air mattress. <laughs> you can go like, I don't know. I just want some rooms that are finished. Stephanie said, are you going to also have water in that room? You know, we've talked about it and we do have access to water right outside the barn. There's a frost-free hydrant, which we could dig down and access, we could tap into that water source and bring it into that room, but I don't think we're going to. Um, one, it's gonna add an extra layer of cost that we don't want to have with this project. We've got a lot going on. Um, and we'd have to figure out some kind of a drain, like where is it gonna drain to? And do we really want to take up any space with sinks when I have a hose right there? I do a lot of my clean out. I won't do a lot of clean up projects in there. I'll do it in the greenhouse, which is right next door. Uh, because I can hose stuff off and it's warm enough in there that I could take house plants out even in the winter just for a short time to do any work I need to. I can have the hose in there, spraying them down and it just goes down onto gravel and then it just disappears. So we just decided at this point, I don't think it's worth it. Marilyn said, when does Aaron start putting lights up for Christmas? I'm surprised you Same. haven't yet. Oh, but you know what? It's just like, it feels like this last weekend we lost a lot of leaves. Yeah. So it's kind of like one of those things that you wait until leaves right. go and I, there are leaves just everywhere. He, he has been though, you ordered some, like some commercial lights this year yeah. and you, he has them strung up in one tree. It showed it in one of the videos. I can't remember. It was like behind me. He's got two different styles in that tree and he had them plugged in the other night so we could go out there and assess which ones we liked the best. <laughs> I don't know, it should be fun. Uh, Anne said, did your electrics go underground? I think they were scheduled for 1020, just curious how they went. So I thought they were supposed to come down that week too, but what they did do was they came that day and they like mapped everything out. So they know exactly what they need to do when they come back. Are they coming in November? It could be December, honestly. It really, it doesn't matter that much because we're kind of like at this point, and we knew by the time they came, we would be pretty much done with projects out there till next spring. Um, and so, they also said that when they do the project, we will be without power for a day and then intermittently for you know a couple, three days. So we asked them if we could put it off until we were no longer watering things every day. So at this point, they could do it whenever it fit in their schedule because we're not watering everything as consistently. Um, so really, whenever it happens, it happens. I'm looking forward to it. We do get to film it. They're totally fine with that. So I'm excited to be able to show you the steps to have those dang 
polls gone. Uh, Monica said, I know that this question has no relevance on this vlog, but I was just wondering, have you started the decor on the baby's room? And you know, I've noticed that. Have you noticed that comment yeah. so much? Like it's servicing, especially yeah. this last week. And I didn't, I really realized like if you guys want to see something like that, maybe we can make a video for our highlights channel. I always want to be, which is where you're watching this video. I always want to be really careful with our main channel and keep it very uh, focused on the subject that we, you know, started out to share. I don't know. I, I just want to be sensitive to that. That's kind of the reason why we started the highlights channel. So we could kind of branch out a little bit, try some new things. So if you guys are interested in seeing stuff like that, I could definitely include it. Uh, I do have to say I have not done a single thing for decor for the baby's room yet. I've got a couple months, a little over two months left now, so I better get on it. It's going to go fast, especially once we start doing Christmas decorating, which I am excited for Christmas this year. I feel like every year is a little different. I don't know if you guys are like that, but one year I'll be super into it. And the next year I'll just be like, I want to simplify. I don't want to do as much. I'm just like tired this year or whatever the case may be. Maybe life is just throwing a lot of stuff at you and you just can't focus on it. Um, but this year I'm super excited and I think it's because of Benjamin. He is the most festive little dude. He's just like you, Aaron. Like around birthdays and holidays, I can just tell he's going to be just like you. I think it's, it's so cute. <laughs> and I think that I'm going to just like, uh, that will feed me and it'll feed my joy and the whole thing and it'll make me want to do more. Um, so anyway, I'm looking forward to it. Last question, Rita said you could frame in a rectangle of that radiator cover metal screening and hang it in front of the HVAC unit. It would camouflage, be decorative, and still allow airflow or access. That is a good idea. I think we should see what the AC unit looks like coming out of the wall. It might not be as, it might not stick out as much as I think it will. I don't know, I think the whole space is gonna evolve over time. Um, did Russell ever catch the light? Aaron was doing that. It was a reflection off your phone. And he was like reflecting it on the wall. Russell is such a nerd. He will follow that. And then if it goes up on the ceiling, he does this weird meow thing where he keeps his mouth wide open and he kind of does this ah, 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 <laughs> as he's watching the light on the ceiling. It's kind of entertaining. And that's it, you guys, for today's recap video. I hope it was helpful and I hope you're having a really great start to your week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.